Okay, thanks everybody. Look, um, I think it's fair to say today's a very interesting time to be a uranium investor. Uh, we've been through some highs, some lows. I think the lows are behind us. What I'm going to walk you through here are two different stories. Uh, I'm Dave Cates, so I am the president and CEO of Denison Mines, but as well as Uranium Participation Corp. I'm going to do a fast forward through both of these companies. I think there are two very interesting ways for you to play this rising uranium price. We're going to start with UPC. A couple of cautionary words here. Now, what is UPC? So UPC is listed on the TSX under the symbol U. This company holds physical uranium. It's there so that the investor can make a call on the commodity without the resource risk of a mining company. When you buy a share of UPC, you've got your notional cut of our uranium inventories that belongs to you. Totally levered simply to that commodity price. Very unique. It's almost like a gold ETF, but it doesn't function like an ETF because we don't have that liquidity in the uranium market to take your inflows and buy uranium. It's one to one. So that doesn't work. This is the closest thing we can get. All right, what do we have? Well, UPC owns uranium. It owns U308 and it owns UF6. This is the picture here at the end of October. Uh, we raised $40 million at the end of September. We set out to raise $20 million. Within hours of that financing going live, our book was at $40 million bucks Canadian. We've gone out and we bought physical uranium with that. Okay, so these numbers will increase as we take those deliveries. We will have more leverage to the uranium price. Now, all of this is the end of October. Look at these prices. We're showing $19.95 per pound. It sounds like a bargain price, right? Like if you're buying a t-shirt or something, $19.95. <laughs> On Monday, we're at 2550. Okay, we're up almost 30% in the month of November. And I'll tell you what, the daily price today coming in somewhere between 2575 and 2625. Okay, so I can't update this chart fast enough. Now, why is that happening? Jordan alluded to it a bit. The timing for this market is brilliant. We are actually seeing the bear market authoring the bull market, as Rick Rule would say we're seeing meaningful production cutbacks. We've seen them since 2016. The latest from Areva and, and Cameco, Cameco's MacArthur River mine, um, being the most significant, right? These are the kind of things you see when the market truly is fixing itself and that bear market is writing itself as a bull market. All right, look, I won't belabor the market. We've had our panel on this. If you want to talk more about the market, please come to our booth. Happy to talk to you about the ins and the outs of what UPC has seen as we've been buying material over the last month. What I do want to do is switch gears because I think Denison is a very exciting story. It's a story that I think people haven't been paying attention to. You know, we're NYSE listed, DNN, uh, we're DML on the TSX. We've actually had an amazing year. That whole year has been lost on the fact that the uranium market's been terrible. Okay, we've had amazing results all summer. People have not paid attention to it. Yeah, some of these uranium stocks have popped since this uh, MacArthur news has come out, but there's no way that we've traded appropriately for the year we've had to this point. All right, what are we trying to do? Look, we're in the Athabasca Basin. Like Jordan talked about for Sky Harbor, we believe the basin is the place to build a really sustainable long-term uranium mining company. That's our, that's our model. Jordan's in the prospect generation business with Sky Harbor. That's why we're invested in them. It's a different type of business. We're in the uranium mining business. We're looking to build a mine. We're going to do that in the Athabasca. If you zoom into the Athabasca, this is our land package, okay, 350,000 hectares. You'll see most of it's focused on that eastern edge, okay, there's no mistake, okay, that eastern edge is where the infrastructure is. It's where Cigar Lake and MacArthur River are located. It's where the Key Lake Mill is and the McLean Mill. We own 22.5% of the McLean Mill. It's processing 100% of the ore from that Cigar Lake mine. Now, how is that ore getting there? It's getting there on the road. Okay, I call it Main Street. There's a road from Key Lake to MacArthur. There's a road from Cigar to McLean. That is Main Street in the basin. Our flagship asset is Wheeler River. Okay, that's located between MacArthur and Key on the southeastern edge of the basin, literally on Main Street. You know what, run next, what runs next to Main Street? The provincial power grid. Okay, we are there because the infrastructure is there. When we look at the economics of our projects and all of the projects that are in development or could be in development in this entire region, infrastructure is going to be the difference maker. That's why we're on the east. 
All right, so what would Wheeler River look like? This is uh, uranium producing mines, 2017 estimated production. Okay, MacArthur and, and Cigar, two largest operations in the world. If Wheeler River were producing in today's market, we would be the fifth largest uranium mine in the world. Okay, we're trying to achieve large scale. We've got a project at Wheeler that has high grades and large scale. We can be the intermediate uranium producer that this market lacks. If you want to invest in a producer for uranium, okay, you can buy Cameco. What's next? What's the next largest uranium producer that you can buy on the stock market? Well, it used to be Paladin, right? Paladin used to be the next largest producer. Well, they're in receivership. Their shares have been delisted. So who else is producing? Basically no one, right? Small scale, US, maybe energy fuels, they're really running alternate feed, but there are no real intermediate producers in this market. And there won't be as we head into the next bull cycle. But Wheeler River has that potential. Uranium One and Paladin, very successful in the last bull market. That's what we're trying to replicate by being the intermediate to Cameco. All right, what does Wheeler River look like? Well, there's two deposits there, Phoenix and Griffin. Uh, you know, they work together in a two-phase approach based on our PEA, six to seven million pounds a year for 16 years. What I'll note here is that everything I talk about for the PEA, it's out of date. All right, our PEA was from 2016, first part of the year, and it was based on drilling to the end of 2015. Well, guys, it's been two years, and it's been four drill programs at Wheeler River focused on the Griffin deposit. Things are different. That's why we're working towards a PFS. Now, when we pull the pounds out of the ground in either case, we're planning for it to go to the McLean mill. Happens that we own 22.5% of this mill. That's great. We love to be able to use our own asset here. But what's really important is that this mill is licensed for 24 million pounds a year. It's running 18 million pounds a year from Cigar. That means we've got 6 million pounds a year excess license capacity today. Okay, this mill is real. It exists. It's operating. It's now licensed to 2027. Okay, the risk on building our new mine is limited to building a mine. It is not building a mill. And you can look at countless mining projects in the world. Milling is complicated. Mill costs often are where you see the overruns. Okay, we don't have any of that risk here. We're not also permitting a new mill. Okay, this is a, a uranium processing plant with radioactive tails. Okay, we are not permitting that. It is already permitted. Any of the guys operating in the western side of the basin, they will have to do this. This does not happen overnight. So what is Wheeler River? Well, look, simply, it's the largest undeveloped uranium project in the eastern Athabasca Basin, okay? It's in the east where we've got the infrastructure. Denison's at 60%. We are earning in right now to 66% on a special deal we've got with Cameco, hugely dilutive for Cameco, hugely accretive for Denison. We've already got the processing plant, and the economics looked good in 2016 before we've added any of the new pounds from the last two years of drilling. And that's what you've got to look forward to, is towards the end of this year, we finished drilling in the October at Wheeler. That's the cutoff. At the end of this year, we're looking for a new resource update for two years of drilling. That we're looking to update that resource and then feed that into the PFS for next year. Okay, those are real catalysts that are on the horizon, like in the near term and in the midterm. So not only are you going to get exposure to the uranium price if you play Denison, but you're going to get exposure to these company-specific catalysts. Now look, I want to wrap up here. Okay, this is a bit of an express treat on Denison, but I want to wrap up with this slide because I challenge everyone in this room to run the stock chart for Denison through the summer, okay? And you tell me whether you think any of our drill results have been reflected in our share price. This is a summary of what we've done this summer. Forget the last two years at Wheeler. This is just this summer. 64 drill holes, 30,000 meters, 91% mineralized. 44 of those drill holes were attempted outside of the existing resource shell from the Griffin deposit. Okay, they were expansion or growth holes. Of those, 86% were mineralized, 64% of them with high grades. Okay, we've finished delineating the ABC lenses. We've expanded the D lenses, which are not included in our previous resource estimate. We found the E lenses 
and we've grown the e-lenses. All of that happened this summer. We got no traction on it just due to apathy. I can prove the apathy by looking at the last section on this slide here. A whole other project, Waterbury Lake. Six hole drill program, our first hole over 1% over one meter. Our fourth hole, 9.1 over 3.7 meters. I think we were down 3% on the day we put that release out. Okay, none of this is in the stock. I do urge you to look at what we've actually done this year and see that eventually as people start to pay attention to the uranium space again, they're going to digest this news and they're going to see that we've actually had a tremendous year. Look, too many results to go through in particular. I'm over my time, but I do urge you, come to our booth before the end of the day and we're happy to walk you through all of the details on all these results. Okay, thanks very much, guys.